France always had a very long history, culture, a most spoken language, impressive architectures, monuments, artists, scientifics, philosophers, poets, kings, and especially warriors. Today the French people may have changed quite a lot, forgetting the past, the history, and even who they were. The society has turned from bad to worse progressively across the past few years, similarly to many Western countries where the religion ceases to exist today. The future has been moving too rapidly, while the past has been forgotten. Evilness is upon us, we can't see it, we are blind, deaf. We see things as everyone asks us to see it as it is, without even thinking about what is good or what is bad. We have been putting our hands in the sand for the past few years, wasting our time, not realizing what we're doing and who we meant to be. However, a country that has no past may not have a future. This is the reason why we need to act immediately. The reason why I have decided to create this long video is to show the world more precisely to France, to every French, how to be proud of his nation, whether he believes it or not, that our country, our homeland, our ancient kingdom was the most powerful nation ever in all history. After facing against the largest obstacle which wished to destroy us and eradicate us, we eventually crushed them all, showing the world who we were and not to mess with us. Our nation was a superpower, an immense weapon for our enemies created by our predecessors. We are the country which has won the most battles in history, more importantly, which created the roots of Europe. We were warriors who never gave up to take what they wanted from the others, who destroyed everything who could stop us. We were called the Franks, our warriors. Frank, which signifies free in ancient Germanic, originated from a small confederacy of Germanic barbaric warriors similar to the Vikings or Alamans living in northern Scandinavia. What we know is that when they descended from Scandinavia, as all the Germanic tribes during the 1st to the 3rd centuries, reaching the territories of Toxandra and Renani to install themselves. The Franks divided themselves into two regions, the Salian Franks, populating the region of Toxandria in the Netherlands, and the Rhenan Franks in western Germany. The Franks, whereas other Germanic tribes, were nomads who spent their time always migrating like the Turkish tribes. They never stayed in a specific area, but moved to explore other territories to reinstall themselves, finding them new resources to feed their people and escape the hard winters, which explains exactly the fact they migrated from the hard climate of Scandinavia. 
However, arriving at the regions of Toxandra and Renani, the Franks realized that on the other side of the Rhine River resided a gigantic empire, the Roman Empire. In 328, the Franks attempted to install by force in the territories of the Roman Empire, in modern-day Mayence and Germany. The result was catastrophic, as the Frankish army was destroyed by the Roman army of Emperor Aurelian. 700 Franks were slain by the Romans, with 300 of them taken into slavery. The Franks were no match for the Roman army, whose military tactics were more organized. Then during this century many other Frankish raids were attempted to penetrate into the Roman territory, which were all failed and the Roman began to settle the Franks at the border to control them. The Franks were described by the Romans as being barbarians, uncivilized people, who were considered as great enemies of Rome, as many of the other Germanic tribes. The Franks were in reality, even though we don't represent them that way, were tall, tough, hairy warriors, wearing fur, with gigantic beards, contrary to the Romans. Their life resembled to the ones of the Vikings, as they slept on fur and ate meat to stay strong and trained all day to be prepared for war. Their children were already warriors at the age of six, as they were trained to become strong enough to destroy their future enemies. The Frankish and Germanic beliefs were essentially paganism. In other words, these warriors believed that if you fought until death on the battlefield, your spirit was sent to the Valhalla. In ancient Germanic religions, the Valhalla is a giant paradise often represented by a giant mountain with a river underneath named the fortification of Asgard ruled by Odin, the most important god of Germanic Scandinavian mythology. As in Germanic culture, a warrior always fought to death, never retreated, similarly to the samurais. Although if he retreated, it is believed that his spirit was sent to the underworld, which is hell. When the Roman Empire started having problems with the nearby neighbors, who were mostly barbaric tribes such as the Visigoths, Many Roman legions were sent all over the empire in order to recruit warriors to fulfill their armies. The first Franks to enter in contact with the Roman Empire were the Salian Franks, under chief Richomer, the son of Teutomer, a legendary Frankish chief, believed to be the one to have founded the Frankish people, decided to create a better relation with the Roman Empire. We don't know quite much about the first Frankish leaders, as we haven't found any writing traces or architecture, although the main thing was that these leaders were mostly legendary. Richomer decided to create a good relation by becoming an ally of the Romans. He eventually became a servant of Rome and was sent to fight the Visigoths at the Battle of Andrinople in 378. Even though the defeat of the Roman army was catastrophic, Richomer had shown a great image of fighter for the Romans. Richomer learned many things Germanic tribes didn't usually do. He learned how to speak Latin, how to be civilized, and the ways of fighting in Roman military tactics. He became Latin, differing himself from the other Franks who refused to collaborate with Rome and remained more Roman than the Salians. At the end, for his service for Rome, he was declared Milis of the Eastern Empire by Emperor Theodosius, which is one of the highest titles of Roman general, before being named Consul of Rome in 384. Richomer married Asilla of Toxandria, giving later birth to a future Frankish warrior named Theodomir. However, Richomer didn't have the chance to live with his son longer, as he was then sent to fight for Rome into many military campaigns over the empire to defend the borders. He spent the rest of his life to fight in many battles against barbarians, where he ended dying in 393 during the Battle of Frigidius against the Visigoths. Twenty years later, in 420, the successor of Richomer, his son Theodomir, refused to collaborate with Rome. We still haven't yet figured out why Theodomir didn't trust Rome, and many historians hypothesize that he assassinated the Emperor Honorius, whose death still remains hidden in Roman history. In 428, 
Theodomir was killed with his mother by the Romans and his only descendant would be Claudion. Thus, Claudian had become the new chief of the Silent Franks of Toxandria. Suddenly, during the years from 428 to 430, numerous migrations took place in the heart of the Roman Empire of Valentinian III, which was being invaded from every side, as the Visigoths installing in southern Gaul, the Burgunds migrating towards the west, the Alans reaching the center of Gaul, and the Saxons migrating to Great Britain. Claudian understood that a great enemy of Rome had arrived in the Far East to turn Europe into hell. The Hunnic Empire, ruled by the most terrifying leader of their race, Attila, was on his way to conquer the Western Roman Empire. As all these migrations since the beginning were due to the arrival of the Huns and were the biggest enemy the Roman Empire had ever affronted. Claudian, who led the Southern Franks in the region of Taxandra from the Frankish capital Dispargium on the eastern side of the Rhine River, knew that if the Southern Franks stayed where they were, they would be invaded by the Huns and his women would become slaves and killed. Claudian prepared the Southern Franks for a migration towards the west to escape the Huns, abandoning the territories of Toxandra to reach the regions on the western side of the Rhine River, in today modern Belgium. In the south, the Renan Franks stayed where they were, as they did not trust the Roman Empire and waited to see if they could negotiate with Attila once he would arrive. Meanwhile, the Roman general Aetius, who was the highest and most important general of Emperor Valentinian III in Gaul, had brought many Roman infantries from all over Gaul to fight the other Germanic tribes in the south without leaving any defenses on the Roman province of Belgium. This lack of defense gave the advantage to the silent Franks to annex the Roman province of Belgium. In 435, Claudian mobilized his army of Franks, began the expedition into Belgium, crossing with his army through the large Charbonnier forest full of Gaul warriors, who caused the silent Franks some struggles to arrive into Roman territory. Claudin then marched with his army towards the cities of Tournai, Cambrai and Arras, managing to take them all so easily, massacring hundreds of Roman Gauls. Claudian then conquered all the regions of the Somme, stretching from the northern sea to Toxandra. These conquests made by Claudian resulted in 440 as the annexion of the Roman province of Belgium by the Salians. Claudian was recognized by all the Roman Gauls of the regions bordering his territory as a great king warrior who had his authority over northern Gaul. Claudian then established his capital at Tournai, the largest city of the region, creating the first Frankish Salian kingdom. He then married a young Frankish woman whose name is unknown, who gave birth to a son called Merové. In the south, the Western Roman Empire realized that the Salian Franks had invaded a province of the empire without prevention, which turned the emperor mad. General Aetius sent his army towards the north in order to take back the province and push back the Salians on the other side of the Rhine River. However, Claudian, who wasn't there to flee back but to impose his authority against Rome, decided to affront Aetius with his army of Salian Franks. Even though the Romans were more equipped than the Franks, they were completely outnumbered as Rome had to keep more troops against the other Germanic tribes. The Salians managed to defend well their kingdom, causing many damages to the Roman army. Aetius realized that the Salians were not that easy to beat, and he would maybe need more mercenaries to make them fall. At the end, the Romans were beaten without being capable to take back the province and abandon the campaign. General Aetius announced Claudian that he would respect him and let the Salian Franks install in the province. Unfortunately, in 450, Claudian died and a year later Merové became the new king of the Salian Franks. Back in the east, Attila and his army reached the borders of the Western Roman Empire. The Renan Franks were now squashed between the Roman Empire and the Huns and had to decide whether to join the Huns or the Romans. 
The Renans, who were as the Jepids, Alamans or Ostrogoths, the enemies of Rome, allied with the Honic Empire. In the west, Rome, who wasn't ready to start a war with the Honic Empire, realized that it would need allies. Aetius was sent from Italy into Gaul to negotiate with many Germanic tribes. Merové, who knew that if the Huns defeated Rome, Europe would fall under their evil supremacy, their women would become slaves and the Salians would disappear from history. Merové took the decision to ally with Aetius against the Huns. Merové brought his most trusted son, Childeric, who was already a young warlord of the Frankish armies, joined the ranks of the Roman army, accompanied with many Germanic tribes and Celtic tribes. During the same moment, the Huns crossed the Rhine River, penetrated Gaul and pillaged a couple of cities reaching Paris before preparing an offensive on the next important city of Gaul, Orleans. The Roman Germanic army of Aetius, who knew that Orleans was the key of Gaul, prepared an ambush to Attila. The Huns were forced to flee back towards the east as they didn't wait for his intervention. Aetius followed Attila, which brought them in the area where the armies would affront each other. The silent Franks of Mirove founded themselves together fronting the Jepids of Attila's army and exterminated themselves. The silent Franks gave all their blood to fight, which made the battle into a butchery. During the battle, Mirove was injured in the leg by a Jepid warrior, which turned the silence hopeless. However, Childeric's Frankish infantry was so powerful that the Jepids were massacred. For the first time, the Frankish warriors distinguished themselves from the Romans as they were probably the best warriors of Aetius' army. After a long night of fighting, the Huns were defeated and Attila was forced to flee back towards the east. The Roman army of Aetius had saved Europe from the Huns. The Salians as well as the Visigoths and the other Germanic tribes became part of the Western Roman Empire and would become known as the ones who saved Europe from hell. The Roman Emperor had been impressed by the Germanic tribes who were the majority to have joined Aetius to have saved the Western Empire. Until this battle, the Franks were respected by Rome, as the Romans had understood that without their help the battle would have been probably lost. Merové had not only become a hero for Europe, but an important king for the Salian Franks, and gave his name to the first great Frankish Salian dynasty known as the Merovingian dynasty, in other words, the branch of Merové, the father of the Salian Franks. After his death, which is still not justified, even though the reason was that he had caught some illness from his injuries during the battle, he was succeeded by his son Childeric I in 457, who became the first king of the Merovingian dynasty. Following his father, Childeric continued to collaborate with Rome. Unexpectedly, Childeric compared to his father was arrogant and hated by his people for the reasons he dishonored his woman, considering man to be superior. This provoked a great madness of the Salians who fired him from the region. Childeric exiled himself from his people in Thuringie, hoping to create a better life where he was invited by the king of Thuringie in his dwell. This exile left the Salians without a king. Meanwhile, back in Italy, a tragic event occurred. Aetius was assassinated by the Emperor Valentinian III to avoid him to steal his power. Aetius was then succeeded by Ricimer, known as the worst general of the Romans, in other words, the destroyer of the Western Roman Empire. In Gaul, another warrior Milis named Aegidius, a Roman Gallic warrior, appeared to save the Roman territory in Gaul, collaborating with the Salians. Seeing that the Salians were without a king, he came and represented himself as their leader for Rome. During the same moment, Childeric, who was enjoying his life in Thuringie, encountered a young Germanic Thuringian princess named Bassin with who he felt in love with and wished to bring her back in the Salian territory when the Franks would accept him. 
After a while, Childeric and Bastin arrived at Tournai, where he was respected and recognized as the real king of their ancestors. His marriage was celebrated at last with Princess Bassin, who became the first woman of the Merovingians, giving birth to a boy named Clovis. Back in the south of Gaul, troubles began. The Visigoths, the Burgunds, and many Celtic tribes began to fight against each other, contesting their territories. The Visigoths managed to defeat them, becoming a new enemy of Rome and the Franks. The Visigoths began invading Gaul from the south to the north, wishing to create a gigantic empire covering Iberia and Gaul. Childeric would not let the Visigoths conquer Gaul. With Aegidius, they descended to Orleans with their armies to defend the borders of the Loire to fight the Visigoths in a battle called the Battle of Orleans in 463. The battle, which ended during probably one year, ended victorious for Childeric defeating the Visigoths and ending their expansion. However, Aegidius was killed in the battle by the Visigoths and left Childeric alone, demanded him to adopt his trusted son Siagrius. Even after Aegidius' death, Childeric, helped by many Roman troops, continued to defend the borders of Gaul to avoid any barbarian attack in the Roman territory. Suddenly, other barbarians began to attack the Western Roman Empire in the west of Gaul, the Saxons. Since the Western Roman Empire had weakened and lost far too much territories, the barbarians decided to finish it. Childeric had promised Rome that he would not let any barbarians take over the territories of the empire, sent his armies to the west to attack the Saxons. The emperor sent a new general to replace Aegidius, named Paul, to help Childeric for the new conflict to come. The Saxons, who were arriving from the far north of Britain, were described by the Romans different than the Franks, mostly ugly, giant and more barbarian. The Saxon way of fighting was always with blood, as they used, similarly to the Vikings, immense axes to chop their enemies as butchers. However, the Franks were more numerous, much more organized in battle, since they had learned by the Roman army the best techniques of fighting. The Saxon king, Edouard sent a message to Childeric menacing him to take over the city of Angers if he wouldn't surrender to his authority. The battle, known today as the Battle of Angers, took place in 469 in the modern region of Angers. The Franks of Childeric managed to defeat the Saxon army, killing Edouard The Roman general Paul was killed as well, and the Romans shown themselves again weaker against the Saxons, losing more and more men than the Franks. Childeric took the city of Angers from the Saxons and protected the western region of Gaul, eliminating the remaining Saxons who had installed in the islands of the Basse Loire, as we say in French. Since Childeric couldn't rule at the same time the entire region of the northern Gaul by himself, he had to give it to a trusted Roman general whose name was Siagrius, the son of Aegidus, with whom he had promised to take care of. Siagrius was, as his father, a Roman Gallic warrior who imposed his authority on the entire region of northern Gaul stretching from the northern border with the Salians to the east, reaching the border with the Breton Celts, onto the south bordering the Loire river with the Visigoths. During this period, the western Romans adopted Christianity and spread it all over the west. Siagrius, who would become Catholic, and decided to convert all the Roman territory into Catholicism. However, the Franks, even though they were more Latinized compared to the all other Germanic tribes, were still pagans. This wouldn't seem to work with Siagrius, who wanted Childeric to convert to Catholicism in order to become Roman. The Franks of Childeric wouldn't accept that, and a conflict began between the Franks and Rome. In order to oppose Childeric to everyone, Siagrius allied himself with the Visigoths, who recognized him as an Aryan. Two clans would then fight against each other, the Aryan Catholics and the Frankish Pagans. Childeric decided with his army of Franks to destroy Siagrius with the Visigoths to impose Frankish authority all over Gaul. He marched with his army towards the city of Paris, the center of power of Roman Gaul, leaded by a holy Catholic woman whose name was Geneviève. She was the most important person of Paris, recognized as the protector of the city. In 476, Childeric reached Paris and sieged the city. 
Geneviève the Catholic was under Childeric's authority. Geneviève, who preferred Childeric, demanded him to protect her and have peace. Childeric accepted and Geneviève allied with him since she was against the Aryan Visigoths of Stiagrius. However, it seemed that even though Childeric had seized the city, many Catholics rebels of Siagrius remained in the city. Paris still resisted the Franks and Childeric did not manage to take over the city completely as his army was numerously inferior. Meanwhile, an event happened back in Rome. Odoacre, a Roman Ostrogoth warrior who had rebelled against Rome, defeated the Emperor Romulus Augustulus and seized the city of Rome. The Western Roman Empire had collapsed and Odoac took control of Italy, creating his own kingdom. Now the last Roman territory left was the one of Siagrius. Childeric wouldn't let Paris to Siagrius and Geneviève neither, but the Frankish king had to abandon the siege as his army was completely exhausted. The Franks, who used to collaborate with Rome as their ancestors since Theotomer, allied themselves with the kingdom of Odoac in Italy. The two kings became friends, great allies and promising to help each other in any case of need. More importantly, Odoac was recognized as a king by Emperor Zenon of the Eastern Roman Empire. Some years later, Childeric sent an expedition in Italy to help the kingdom of Odoac against the Alemann invasion and managed to defeat them showing his loyalty to the descendants of the Roman Empire. Childeric had become a very important character in Western Europe, known as the only Germanic king to become a truly ally of Rome. His name became known all over the empire, from Paris to Rome on to Constantinople. In 481, Childeric died at 45 years old. His body was buried in his capital at Tournai in modern Belgium. His tomb would be known as the tomb of a powerful king, who had been the first king of the Merovingian dynasty, covered with gold, swords and 22 war Frankish horses buried around him with his most trusted generals. Childeric was the last Frankish king to have lived and fight for Rome. He would become a symbol in the entire western history. Historically, before his death, Childeric's last words were, after my death, only one person will make us stronger and will make our history come true. Your job is to destroy Siagrius and take Gaul. Indeed, only one person could do that, only one boy who was already strong enough as his father could do it. His name was Clovis, the first king of the French history. So we have finally reached the end of this video, I hope as always you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments or any questions to add, don't forget to write them down in the comment area below the video. And I hope to see you back in a future video on my channel. Bye!